Pulling everything apart, and the lower end, top end of the system, the uh, butt pad, the, the feeder hose from the bottle to to the regulator, the adapter from the bottle to the regulator. I would not recommend to use red since it is very heat resistant and doesn't need to be in this kind of install. If you ever want to, want to take it off, you would need uh, heat from a heat gun to to uh, unlock this. So I would recommend blue Loctite instead, whatever this is Permatex, but whatever blue Loctite is better because it's not as strong as red. I would as well recommend when installing this because I already fid fiddled around a bit with the, the uh, airships with the, with the stock that you would have at least two bottles of 0 0.2 one empty and one filled so you can check for leaks uh, the empty one just because you need to fiddle around with it so that you know, lock tight a mouse, a workbench with a good vice. So you can pinch your gun in it without having issues with it moving around because you are going to need to make a modifications to your lower receiver with this with this uh, air, air, air stock system. The gun I'm going to install this on is my own APS ASR 110. It has already been modified to run the feeder hose from the rear, so I don't need to open my whole upper and lower receiver just and uh, break out the mech box just to, just to do that. I have already done that. So now we need to break this apart, take a few measure measurements, and hopefully we'll make this through without tears. So I've pulled apart the upper and lower. Now just to pull up the back end. Take a few measurements. I'm going to have to open my mech box anyway because this looks way too short to reach the regulator. And it is quite a bit too short, about 10 centimeters. I'm still going to have to open my mech box to show you how I did my rerouting of the feeder hose inside the mech box. At the same time, I'm not going to show you <coughs> how to how to say um, disassemble the gun. Disassemble the gun. Sorry. I hope hopefully. Okay, so I got my pew stick uh, disassembled. As you can see, it's a magnetic PDI case. Okay, so now I have the the brass quick quick connect coupling off from the feeder hose. I just gen gently suck it on back on the. Box. It is quite cold in here actually, so uh, the feed line is quite hard, unfortunately. Okay, so the 
feeder light is on, then we gently push the brass coupling locking whatever you want to call it back on so it secures the hose. There we go. Now we can fiddle it back again in the position it was and close it up. Okay, so this is now back together and uh, here comes the fiddly part. So basically, uh, the only thing you need to modify on your pew stick is this. The length, uh, the depth of that does not equal this. So this is, this is the basically the only thing that you need to modify. You're good. It is irreversible, so if you don't want to ruin a good uh, low receiver, I suggest you get a new one, or a second hand one. I bought this gun specifically to make it into a DMR with an air stock. It's an APS. It was broken when I bought it. I bought it only for the upper and lower receiver. I like the look of it. Sue me. Don't, please. So the only thing you need to do is basically mark, mark all the way around, the depth, and this is quite precise, you see this, it's an extra sling mount basically that's welded on to the, to the air stock. So you don't need to take measurements <coughs> from inside. You can if you want to, it's not necessary. And this is 6 point 6.7 millimeters, to be really precise. This, however, might not, not, might not be. I've heard rumors that it is 6 millimeters. Mine shows 6.5, 6.7. six millimeters if you can see it wiggle a bit it's not that precise you need to measure up six millimeters around the whole thing and start when you put it in the vise always remember to put some cloth around it so you can tighten it down without having it scratching your body that I like doing stuff I like metal work so I have these scribes to mark things off which leave uh, quite a good imprint um, on the soft reliever. As you can see here I've marked almost all the way around. I can now put it in vice and start cutting it. I will use a uh, angle grinder for this just take off the, the most of the excess, then try to shave it down even more with a file. Okay, so now I've taken the file and take some of the the excess excess uh, stuff that was left by the angle grinder. Try to file it down a bit for it to be more more straight. Quite good. Quite happy with the results. And since I was using an angle grinder, I got the shavings, lovely shavings from my lower receiver everywhere on my stuff. It's still a bit too long, as you can see, it's a slight wobble. Uh, 
and a air gap. So it's still a bit too long. I have now gotten it shaved to be basically where I want it to be. Now the mechanics inside of the lower receiver. Check for fitment. And see how it can work. Or what screw oh we need to use to get this uh, in the spacing correct. It is quite long, a gap in between, the short one will not work, at least not on my, not my body at least, it might work on somebody else's but not on mine. The longer one is, at least it feels to be quite okay, so general mock-up. This is basically what it would look like when finished. Slime the cover back on. It's starting to look quite good actually. I like, I like how it looks. Uh, no thread lock yet. Just simple testing. It feels really sturdy. No gap, no flexing. Or oh well, okay, uh, since this is aluminium, there is slightest flex. Nothing that can't be, nothing that's too much. Will not be a problem. At least I don't think so. Somebody will probably be screaming at me that not even the slightest wobble is acceptable. Now I kink my hose. Should have run it through before tightening it down. This is another example of why you do not want to use thread lock until everything is tested at least once. Because if I would have used thread lock now I would have needed to clean it off before adding new thread lock. At least that's what I do. I work more on cars than I do on actual air aerosol guns. So before tightening everything down, run it through where it's supposed to run through because you do not want to kink the hose or leave it kinked. Uh, hopefully it didn't damage my hose when I kinked it just now. It is now run through where it should be. Then back down again. Just to camouflage it a bit. It can go up there and down again because it's supposed to go back here anyway to the regulator. So it's not, not a big problem. Up and down and up again. Can this is why I recommended you using two two bottles if you just have have them, so you can mark everything up. I found that since I'm using the longer version of the first regulator, I had some hassles marking everything up. Uh, if you have the options to buy the bottles with the shorter regulators will fit, fit much nicer, both inside of the air stock and fiddling with those air hoses because it's quite a close fit. Maybe a bit too close fit for my taste. Can make it work, but it could be a hassle, especially in the field when trying to reload your 
your uh, tank while in the field, maybe under enemy fire. Doesn't look right. It fit much better before, obviously, putting that hose on. And this is another example of why I recommend using the shorter version of the first regulator. Uh, because this uh, adapter gets lifted up with the uh, with the hose and it also gets a bit off center and it also limits to where you can put you uh, all your hoses and stuff so if you have the option to buy your your 0 0.2 liter or as you imperials like to say it goes CUI uh, bubbles go for the shorter shorter regulator because it that's it's that much extra room it's like maybe two centimeters extra room that will save you quite a lot of hassle I actually have two 0 0.8 liter or 1.2 liter tanks 1.2 liter sorry tanks extra now since I'm switching to the, the the mass and they both have the smaller versions of the of the regulators so I might change them out it's a bit of a snug fit as you pr probably can see it's lifting itself up it will get locked in place with the the butt pad it will start to pull on the on the side. It will hold. Shouldn't be a problem. If you want to, you can always zip tie this shut as well for it. Right, so next step is I just put the zip tie on it so it would stay in place. Uh, get this to length. Cut it to length and put it in. We'll just do a test fitment. See how long it should be because I want it all the way in. Might even add a O-ring, a seal around this, so it won't accidentally disengage one of the hose. But I don't. Zip ties, I love zip ties and brake lead and other bunch of stuff. Super handy. Uh, you can always zip tie this to the other feeder line as well. The other feeder line that comes with the system, also in the package for the mass, is this one. This is basically the feeder hose from the from the bottle to the regulator. However, I don't like it. I think I'm going to try with the old one, old macro line, because the inner diameter is, I'd say maybe 50% smaller on the newer feeder line than compared to the old one. Uh, it might also be that it has to be stronger for it in order to work. That's why it also is always thicker, but it's also now in its okay. It's basically two degrees centigrade, or two degrees on the plus side here in Finland. So it's really, really stiff. Even this is stiffening up. But in the summertime, it's really, really flexible and good. Um, all the issue is these are some kind of new locking locking mechanism for the adapter and for the uh, regulator it does fit in ok 
Okay, you can't twist it out. Good, good. Because I tested this as well inside when I just got the kit. I had to unbox it, check everything out, see how everything looks, see what it feels, build quality, so on. And then when it was warm, it might have been that it, it wasn't fully fully pressed in, but it didn't didn't lock in place as I wanted. Kept slipping out all the time. However, now it feels better. But just feeding in, I don't know. Camera might be off. It might catch this, it might not. I'm not sure. This is also some places that I would recommend using O rings to lock stuff in place here and here. However, I'm only doing a test fit. I have not put lock, uh, thread lock on this upper Allen key, uh, Allen bolt yet either. So I can just as easily pull this apart still if I, win if I wanted to. But as I said probably way too many times already that I want to fit everything, see how it feels, before I s before I lock stuff in place, that's that's just me. Uh, random measurements would be about here. That'd be good. Still have extra extra hose for a remake if I mess this up. It's, it's not a problem. Here as well, would recommend putting a uh, O-ring. Well, just to keep it locked in place. Still something that's jamming, probably just because of the the wrong type of bottle or wrong type of regulator. That I have. It is quite pinched there. However, Minecraft MASS and K1. Just throw the rest of the stuff on this and uh, pull the zip tie off it as well so I can adjust the, the um, pressure. So this is now the other. I have two identical. As you can see, one is empty, one has approximately, let's say, 1,500 PSI maybe inside. First test. Please. Okay, nothing's happening. Uh, so that okay, there's no pressure coming to the regulator. Uh, it might be that I. Okay, something's obviously wrong. It might be that the engager, because this is built up on the same system basically that the Minecraft regulator is. There is a small, small Allen or hex key, hex uh, bolt inside of this that's supposed to press this open valve up. Uh, by the looks of it, it's way, 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 way off on the bottom. I'll just have to adjust it back up a bit. And just 
pull the hose then. So that is why they supply the thicker feed line. As I suspected, this will not hold the pressure directly from, from this one. Well, now it's basically empty. Everything went to the atmosphere. But you will need to use the thicker, less flexible feed line, unfortunately this to hold because there is just way too much pressure not like in place. Almost empty. Let's try it anyway. This is why I tried the, the uh, other line because it is so fiddly to get it on. Just rubbing the threads. There we have it folks, fully installed, I got to jiggle around a bit with the uh, feeder hoses from the HVA tank, got them secured quite good there, if you want to you can tie these two together, just leave it, it does work as a uh, tournament lock. to to get to your adjuster if you're comfortable for your own for your own purpose. I know I probably will customize and make a cheat razor for this since I run this as a DMR. I've always run it as a DMR. I like the game style. Um, if you order it from Minecraft, it will probably take like, um, let's say three to four weeks plus an additional one to two weeks in the mail. I know that my good friend, buddy from Sweden, who owns PM Airsoft, has a few of these in stock. So for your lucky guys that live in Sweden, send PM Airsoft a message on Facebook, for example, and Patrick will probably get back to you within a few hours. He, can, he also does plenty of custom work. Really good guy. Ro loves to run his mouth. He's a big softy. He's like a teddy bear. I love the guy. Uh, give him a shout. He's also on our on the Minecraft owners forum on Facebook. So yeah. Hope you guys liked it. Hope it'll help you out with uh, your install of the air stock. It's not that difficult. You need a few tools, some uh, some thread lock. I'd recommend using a vise well cutting off the excess from the buffer tube. Um, you can do it easily with a, um, with a hacksaw. I use an angle grinder only because it's faster and leaves a much more cleaner cut. Still filed down the excess edges because I left it a few mils. A few mils too much, but rather safe than sorry than cutting off maybe way too much. It might still hold on fine. I like to I, I like to take uh, the safer route. Good thing about this that it's not a like the red line, it's not a only use for a um, for an air stock. If you want to disconnect this hose, 
put back on your, your quick quick disconnect, move your, your regulator back on your normal tank, put it in your backpack if you want to play more, let's say, of a speedball game, you want to shoot more. Thanks guys for watching, hope this helped you out. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section. Send me a message on Facebook. I'll get back to you.